very special guest this evening. It is my co-instructor, which we have um, we've heard a little bit from, but not enough from you just yet, Kurt. And so actually, rather than preparing, which would have been awesome, rather than preparing, I, uh, Kurt, why don't you take a moment and just introduce yourself to the group. Actually, they've met you in Module 1. Um, it, we, we talked about, uh, we introduced you and your background and all that, but if you'll take a moment just to ref give a refresher and say hi to everybody. These are our Connect members. So they have, um, they participate in our Social Media Manager Pro, and then they are our Connect monthly subscribers because they are committed to their business and they want that ongoing monthly training. So I'm going to flip over to you now, Kurt, for a quick introduction of yourself. That's awesome. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I uh, uh, Can you hear me okay, by the way? Testing yes. out this, this fancy mic, and then I got like this whole glow going on right here, something else I'm testing. I know. What is that? Um, there's this little focus button up there. Like We could play with features on here all day long, yeah, but it helps me focus. if you did it on purpose or if you just had spit. No, 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 no. I actually, I actually enjoy it this way, so then it blends out everything around me, so I look like I'm talking, and it's even more important, right? Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Kurt Molly. Uh, I'm the co-founder of a company called Black Box Social Media. Uh, I do a lot of social media and got my start doing a lot of uh, local business social media, and you'll see me in a bunch of other modules. I love recording stuff with Kate, but I'll tell you a real long story short is uh, real estate market took a downturn. I came to this thing in Austin, Texas called the Internet Marketing Party where I had met Kate, and basically it was with a group of individuals that I picked up some ideas and I said, man, this is amazing. And other people were selling these same ideas to other network marketers or online marketers. And I'm like, man, if I if I applied these skills, I mean, this is like just some crazy ninja stuff. If I applied these skills to um, small businesses, they'd pay me a lot of money. I know I can do it. So I had no money. I had no credit. had to do something. So I'm going to show you a presentation here in just a little bit that goes through the SEO and kind of how I make my presentation. I do a lot more live presentations now, and I'll show you how to get a lot of referrals, but my niche is really connecting with people one-on-one, -on -one, explaining the problem or solution, and then closing and asking for the business. And uh, the great thing is that I don't think for the last 18 months we've advertised. It's all word of mouth. So uh, once you do really well for a couple of people and word travels fast, and I mean, Kate, if it wasn't for word traveling fast and that one party in Austin, Texas that happens once a month, we wouldn't be on this call today. Well, I mean, I could say, isn't that the dang truth? Because I credit Internet Marketing Party for being the place where I met my very first connections uh, and really got my very first clients and launched my business. So when you guys are in the Social Media Manager Pro training, especially around the client getting, um, Kurt, you and I should do one too, but um, you know our good friend Ori Ben Gal. Absolutely. Couchsurfing Ori, he and I have an audio in there for you guys to listen to that is all about networking at a live event. And so we talk about going to networking events and how to meet people that you, like Kurt and I, how we connected and now we're, you know, we he's not a client, but we do business together, so how to find joint venture partners. And then also when you're at those networking events, how to find clients, build your business online and off. So you guys should go to the Finding Clients module we talk specifically about this one event that we have called Internet Marketing Party. And by the way, if you don't have one of those types of events in your local area, I highly recommend you position yourself as an authority by starting one yourself. So just a little quick uh, tip there on actually something that we're going to talk about today that is a perfect segue, as I should have known that you would have set us up for. Kurt, thank you so much. Uh, today we are going to be talking about how to get started doing social media management for local business. Some of you may already have clients in local, and some of you, so you may be looking for more clients, and some of you may not have clients in local, and you might be looking to get some. So either way, that's what tonight's webinar is all about, and Kurt is the master at that. As a matter of fact, I have no qualms saying that I bow down in this area. <laughs> I have this much expertise because for some reason, just the way, I don't know, whatever you believe in, the universe, does whatever, the way it all worked out is that I've never really had a local business client. Um, I talked to you guys a little bit about it uh, because I've consulted with a few, but to get down to the nitty gritty, I've not been in the trenches with local businesses. So one of the huge reasons why I wanted to partner with Kurt, among many others that you guys see throughout the course, was that he brings this element of understanding 
a huge market segment <laughs> that I don't really know much about, which is local business. And it also, um, from what I understand, is for you guys getting started is your lowest hanging fruit. It's a great place to go and get your first client within the first couple of days and is a really very simple sell as well as uh, the type of services that are easy to fulfill that clients could come back over and over and over every month. You kind of get them like addicted to you like crack almost from what I understand. Um, I could be wrong, um, but so maybe I, and maybe I just like doing all the hard work working for these other more national type businesses or global businesses, but that's what we're going to talk about today. And, um, but if I could do one housekeeping thing before we do, and that is, I don't know if you guys saw in the, in the Facebook group, but I launched a contest today for, it's kind of inception, contest inception, that's probably what I should have called it, uh, contest about contest ideas. So I'd seen a couple people posting in a couple of other groups and in our group about ideas for contests, and I thought, let's have a contest to come up with cool contest ideas. So if you guys will go to the Facebook Connect group, and Kurt, you're not allowed to participate. You're, you're excluded from winning. But if you guys just want to comment in there, we're going to play a little game called Wicked Smart. And I want your Wicked Smart Facebook contest ideas. And uh, the winners are going to receive, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick a bunch of winners because I think that there's a bunch of different ways to skin a cat. So I'm personally going to pick a bunch of winners and I'm going to mail you a book from Amazon. And, um, I'm not telling you what book or whatever, but I'm going to mail you a book from Amazon. I promise it'll be a good one. And for the my best choice, for the number one choice, I'm also going to give you 50 bucks to go spend whatever you want on Amazon. So nothing too crazy, but if you have a Wicked Smart contest idea, I just wanted to put a little incentive in the group for us to get sharing and get talking, and I figured this was one way to do it. So not now, because you're going to listen to Kurt, but after this webinar, you guys should head over and comment on that thread with your Facebook contest ideas in our Facebook group contest. Cool? Okay. All right, so Kurt, I am now going to not talk. Well, I'm going to try to talk some. If there's any person on the planet that talks more than me, it's Kurt, which is a good thing because he's super fucking... <laughs> Super wicked smart. Oh, we're not allowed and to cuss on these calls. You can. I just we just shouldn't. We can, but we shouldn't. Shouldn't. So okay. let's I talk about first of all. Um, I'm gonna let them look at you since I have no makeup on, which is actually kind of my favorite thing about these hangouts is I kind of stopped caring about that sort of thing. And um, <laughs> um, as I'm laughing, as I'm here in my professional dress. Um, yeah, me too in my Victoria's Secret uh, sweater here. Uh, uh, what are you going to do? I, can, I have controls and everything to share. I do. Screen. I'm going to let you share. So, the, uh, so just to kind of set up some context here, you guys, uh, and I don't know where your presentation picks up because the other thing that's awesome about Kurt and I is that we generally do little or no preparation for our stuff, but it's all part of our system. It's all part of the system. This is very true. This, this is, is part of the system. system. The genius doesn't work with too much preparation. So the thing is, is um, Kurt, first of all, let's just say I picked up a Social Media Manager Pro training, mm -hmm. and I went through a few of the modules, and really what I need to do, and you and I can agree, in order to have momentum, the thing is to not spend your time trying to learn everything first. Would you agree? I have, so here's my personal favorite, and I'm glad you asked that question. Yes. Um, for me personally, what I have built my career, what I have built my business on and helped out so many other social media managers is the IBR training that I did, the intention behavior result, and I don't remember where that is in the module or, or how that places. I remember we recorded a while back ago. It's, but in, it module, is, it's in module two, yep. It's in module two. I mean, and, I'll, and I'm going to go through this super, super, super fast, but basically what I do is I sit down, and it's all about language with as you're talking to your clients, and what we do is we go over three, point, with three points, which is called IBR, it's intention behavior result, so I can really figure out what's the intention of the client, and then I'll figure out the behavior, how to make this whole thing work, and then we focus on the, the third thing, the result, and there's a whole language pattern I go into this, but it's super important that... Um, People will buy based on your language, not necessarily your experience, and it's super important to remember. And I'd have them hit that module first, because really, if you're if you can change your language, Kate, let's be completely honest here. If you can change your language, like 
you don't have to know everything. People who just trust you and do business with you, and as long as you can complete the task, you don't have to be the expert before you get the money. Uh, I absolutely believe that's true, and I tr I love the way that you explain it um, because I don't explain it so well. I try to say stuff like just be confident and go out and talk to people and pretend like you know what you're saying. But I love the way that you explain it because if you guys really want to get momentum out of the gate and get and and um, and um, do well with this business, the thing is just to go out and get clients. And you just kind of have to trust, first of all, that Kurt and I know what we're talking about when we're teaching you in Social Media Manager Pro, and just recreate and use the words that we give you when you go out and talk, and you will land your very first clients. If you spend the first three weeks, two weeks, three weeks, one week, I don't care how long, with your nose in the training trying to learn everything, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get completely overwhelmed. And the second thing that's going to happen is you're not going to go out and get clients. You're going to lose momentum. So what you need to do is really stop all of that and go get a client. Yes? Yeah. So it, it, one, one quick little story, and I'll jump into my presentation. I used to run large call centers. So we had to train lots of people to do lots of different things, right? Almost kind of like herding cats. Um, and basically what happened is, is we had this client. It was AT&T. And what happened was is it was a two-week training because when someone would make a sale, they had to enter in all these codes. It was two weeks. I cut the training from two weeks down to six hours. And our client was upset. My boss was upset. But the whole thing was is the only time that they had to enter all that stuff that they trained two weeks on is if they made a sale. And the average person only made one or two sales a week. So I didn't really need to train them on any of that stuff until someone made a sale, then I walked through it with them. So really, if you, the best part about the first part of the training that you guys have put together and the whole language stuff and everything else is if you talk to people about their favorite subject, which is them, and just start asking them questions, the presentation I'm going to give you in a minute, it'll just fill in literally just everything. I mean, I'll tell you this, as I'm sitting here in this nice little Toro shirt right here, uh, this is a company owned by the San Antonio Spurs. It's one of our clients because we basically showed them the presentation that I'm about to show you here, but it was all based on our language. And it had nothing to do about did we have experience working with the NBA before. It was just us sitting down, having a conversation, asking them what they liked, going through that IBR, and they told us exactly what they wanted because they told us everything that they didn't like about their last people or the things they wanted to do. And then we wrote the plan. I didn't have to come up with the plan. I just had to ask them the right questions. So. Perfect. Okay, so to set the stage for you guys tonight watching, uh, the webinar that Kurt is going to show you or the, the, the presentation that we're going to go through tonight is kind of that, that thing that if you want to go out and find, you know what, do you want to talk about first before we do that actually, Kurt, would you talk a little bit about why uh, going out and getting a local business client as your first client is kind of like that? But we say that low-hanging fruit, that um, that easy first client to get. Can you talk a little about that, or is that in your presentation? Yes, that's actually a good way to kind of uh, kick this off. Um, oh. As I'm scrolling up to the very top of it, since I just got done editing it. Um, so here's the thing. Here's why we say low-hanging fruit. It kind of dives back into my personal story for just a minute. So when I started this out and I didn't have any money or credit, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I joined a company that, uh, that Kate knows as well. It was a network marketing company of someone's house I was just at on Sunday. And I, I saw this basic information that was really complicated that they were reselling to other internet marketers. And I knew it was super complicated, and only the geeky online people like really got it, like an autoresponder. Now, for anybody who does online marketing, an autoresponder is like, I could set that up in my sleep, like you pay a Weber 20 bucks and write a couple of emails. It's not too hard. But what I realized is small businesses, you say autoresponder, they're like, wow, what do you mean? Well, people can put in their email addresses and automatically get emails. You can set that up for us? Yeah. And small businesses don't like paying $49 for something. Small businesses pay two, three, four, five hundred bucks. So what I basically did is this, when I was doing, uh, I was in network marketing for a while, what I basically did is I just took that same information and I started going to small businesses because I didn't have any money or credit or any other experience and I just said, hey, look, if you, because by the way, you'll hear me say this in my speech over and over today, no one does anything consistently ever. They just don't and that's what I count on for small businesses. Small businesses just got their business up and running and like that's all that they care about. So when I come into their business, and I start asking them questions about their business, right? 
They start telling me how great it was to start this ice cream shop. It was their lifelong dream, and they did it with their buddy, and they make ice cream with this whatever. Just let them talk forever. And I literally, I'll pull out my iPhone, and I'll just go into Google, and I'll just type in, and I want to see if they appear on Yelp. And all of a sudden, I start seeing these opportunities because what I'm going to show you tonight is a lot of these small businesses don't realize some of the simple stuff that they can do. And, Kate, I think this is probably the biggest thing before we get into the presentation is it's all a perception of value. And we teach a lot about this in some of the other trainings that I've recorded with you guys as well. Um, but what's so important is, is even though it might take you just 20 minutes to do or an hour to do like what I'm going to show you, I mean, people are paying $1,500, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 for these services because that's how valuable it is to them. Mm -hmm. A, you have the knowledge. B, you have the time. C, you have the know-how. And then D, the most important thing, if they don't do it consistently, they're not going to get results. So you pay money for to be in this course, you come to these meetings, you watch these videos. Um, I guess the, the, be the be best point I can give to this, we, I think we talked about this actually in the training, is Picasso. Someone walks up, the story is, is someone walks up to Picasso, I think it was Picasso, whatever. Walks up to Picasso, sitting at a cafe, Picasso, Picasso, draw my picture. He goes, no, I'm having a, uh, you know, a coffee. He goes, no, 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 draw, uh, draw me a picture. So he grabs this napkin and he draws this picture real quick and he throws it back at the girl. And the girl goes, Picasso, thank you. How much do I owe you? And he goes, $57,000. She goes, Picasso, but it only took you 30 seconds. And he goes, no, it took me 57 years to be at this very moment yep. to do what I'm about to do. So people will value this information if you do it consistently. You're going to get rewarded for it. What's really going to come down to, and Kate, you'll probably agree with me on this, is, and I know you had the same problem that I did when I started out, is asking for a higher price. People will pay it but you'll be more nervous asking for a higher price than what people would be willing to pay you. They'll pay you a lot more. Most people just don't ask the right questions. Cheers. Cheers. So with that, let's um, let's jump in. Good. I've been coaching. You have control, so you can do the screen and everything? I believe so. Let's take a look at this thing. So I'm going to hit this thing over here, and you should see, you should see my full, do you see my full screen? Uh, give me just a second. It's uh, you're frozen, but I don't see your screen yet. Now I do. I see all your eight million windows, and now I see. Get ready to write this down and do it. Okay, that's great. Good. That right. is one of the last slides that I have. That was a great oh. presentation. You did a great job. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here, Kurt. I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys got a lot out of tonight. I hope you guys got a lot of value. All right. So I'm going to open this up, but I talk fast. So. Let me kind of preface this here for just a moment. Is uh, from what I'm about to, ready to show you. This is a presentation. I do a lot of live presentations, um, uh, a lot of speaking engagements. Now it is super easy to get speaking gigs. No one ever does anything consistently ever. Go out to your local chamber of commerce. Go out to some meetups, and just start being the regular. And just start asking people about their business. You'll be surprised when you tell people that you assist people with social media and online marketing. They'll just start asking you a bunch of questions. Always, When I get in front of them, I'll give them this presentation or I'll give them a little bit shortened presentation if it's one-on-one. -on -one. This explains everything that I do in very layman terms. Okay? So let's see here. So Kate, I don't know how to set this up any differently, um, but basically what I have here is... Um, well, as you know, with your Mac, because I have my I have my full screen and then my presentation screen, so I can't see you at all. You, it looks great. Yeah, all, all I see is uh, you deserve to hear this. I see your slide and a little bit of black on uh, either side. Other than that, you're you know I don't see anything else. Perfect. This just means I can't see you or engage with you at all. So if you have anything, just interrupt me, which you typically do anyway. But it's fine. I, I will absolutely interrupt you when I have stuff to add. No worries. Okay, good. So we have a lot of information, so I'm going to go through this. It's going to be under 60 minutes. Uh, but I do want you to log out of Facebook, close your email, get yourself in a quiet area, turn off your cell phone. I know this is all housekeeping stuff, um, but quite honestly, for the rate that, that I charge for my time right now, I'm just respectful of everybody's time. Um, so do yourself a favor and, and really pay attention here. Uh, this is going to help really explain a lot of this to your clients. So basically, here's what we're going to do is we're going to show you our some updates and proven strategies. We're going to go through Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Google+, and local search directories. 
Now, I did this presentation recently for a real estate group, so I kind of focused on real estate just a little bit, but you can really add any words that you want into the presentation. And then, Kate, I'll give you access to this presentation, so if you want to share that in the group or how you want to do that, um, I'll give you that. I have let other social media managers uh, that I've worked with in the past use this presentation. They've done well with it. But basically what I emphasize when I go over this is, hey, look, we're going to cover all these social media networks, and you'll see why it's so important here in just a couple of moments. Now, really who this whole thing's for is um, it's pretty much for anybody. Anybody who owns a business, sales professionals, direct sales people, affiliate marketers, authors, speakers, professional coaches, other professionals. Um, this slide right here literally is, it's for everybody. Now, for me personally, if you're going to choose a client, ask them questions about their business and uh, find out who you want to work with. Like if you're really interested in dance, for instance, go work with dance studios. If you're interested in like, holistic medicine, go work with those professionals and then customize the presentation. But this, everything I'm going to show you here works for any genre. You figure which one you want to be in. There's lots of money out there. Who this isn't for, and, I, and this is all about language that I set up with my clients at first who say, look, if you're not coachable and teachable, like if you feel that you know it all but you're just giving me money to do the work, like we're just not going to work very well with each other because I manage the results, and that's what you find in that, uh, I think Kate's in section two for the IBR. Uh, people who are afraid to make money, they always laugh at that when I say that, and people who are resistant to trying to th uh, new things. Because you are going to make your client feel uncomfortable, and you got to tell them, look, no, and write this down, no one does anything consistently ever. So let's plan on that for your competition. A lot of people have, and I always make my clients laugh when I say this, a lot of people have mommy and daddy issues and stuff stuck between their ears and daddy didn't hug them, mommy didn't give them a pony, like whatever. But they won't be on video and they won't do the things that we're going to ask you to do as well. So I know that nobody does anything consistently ever and people usually spend a lot of time to get ready to get ready and that's my competitive advantage. So you gotta be, you've got to be open to new things. So I always tell my clients you may be here because print newspaper advertising is plummeting print yellow pages are non-existent, you know, TV advertising is really expensive, direct mail, super expensive, um, and basically you just know that your potential customers are going online and looking at social media. A lot of people when you talk about social media marketing, they don't know what it means whatsoever, um, so whatever you describe in this presentation basically is going to be their overall definition for they're going to have a much clearer understanding. But what's important to always mention is when I tell clients, hey look, if you're coming to us for this digital marketing, it's because everything else that you've tried before, like when you do a direct mail campaign or when you do um, a big billboard, once you spend that money, then it's gone. Like once that billboard's gone, it's gone. Once they throw away the mail, it's gone. What I'm about ready to show you, you do it consistently over and over, you're always online. It'll always be online. It doesn't go away. Like it doesn't go away when you stop paying for it. So super important, but you got to do it because there's so many other people going online right now you got to be part of the front. So today I demonstrate how people will grow their business and then what we're working on, what's working right now for us. Uh, this is a place you put in your bio. So a little bit about myself is I work consulting capacities for Apple, Microsoft, Cisco Systems, United States Postal Service, ran inside sales, and in 2007 started a family real estate business, 2010 lost all my money in it, which was why I started this business, which I love this so much more. Uh, I've been on stages with like Phil Grove, Jeffrey Combs, Mike Dillard, um, some of those others. And then I always include just a little story into the presentation about myself. But three years ago, Nick Time and I we were in competition in real estate business in Austin, Texas. And basically for years what we had done with our personal local business is we had advertised in newspapers, we had advertised in yellow pages, we had advertised with direct mail, we had advertised in radio, we had advertised uh, we had tried some really low budget TV stuff and honestly it just cost us a whole bunch of money and we saw that money just be burned. And this is where I'm relating to the customer saying, hey, traditional advertising the way you may have done it before, it just doesn't, it's not as effective as it used to be and literally it's super expensive and it's a one time exposure. So I always tell people with the falling real estate market back then, traditional marketing was not working for us. We were losing money in the businesses that we built. Like I, I really make it clear to people, these strategies don't cost a lot of money to get up and get going. But I had to change quickly and I had to make something happen quickly. And I always tell clients, hey look, before you ever get in this situation, let me show you some things 
that clearly you can do for your business to stand out ahead of the competition. It's always better to be uh, you know, ahead of the curve instead of behind the curve. And if you're behind the curve, there's a great way that you can make up. Like I can show local businesses how to outrank national competitors just by doing some very basic local marketing. So what I, basic, what I basically did, and the reason you guys are here too, is a few months after I started doing this and just networking, like I said, go to networking events, tell people you do this for small businesses, I ended up having a radio show with this guy over here on the right. He's done over 55 million online. He's a brilliant individual, but he's someone that I met that put me in connection with some amazing people and some amazing information that just changed my life. So I always give this guy a lot of credit whenever I speak. But that's really the same reason you guys are here too, to listen to, to what Kate's doing and listen to some of the stuff that I'm doing too, is I want to be able to give back like what, uh, what this guy did right here for me and change my business. So pay attention close to the information. A lot of it came, came from him. So 2010, we created Black Box Social Media. Now, this is a part where some of my social media managers, they'll change this where it says, our group, meaning you know the different people that I've worked with, people just want to know that you're going to get the job done not that you know how to do all the skills. And that is one of the most important things you're going to have to learn throughout this whole training. If people trust you, you will get the job done. How you get it done doesn't really matter. You don't have to be the expert. So what I tell people is I say, look, our strategies have worked for national best-selling authors. These people have been on The View, professional sports teams, real estate companies, national speakers, oil companies, Miss Kansas, financial companies, networking companies, um, network marketing companies, network marketing celebrities, parties, billiards, pest companies. Like, I show you all these logos not to impress you, but it's to say, look, these strategies work for anybody. Like, they've been proven on, I don't know what we're up to, 60-some different businesses or something like that. Like, they're universal strategies that most people just don't do because no one does anything consistently ever. So all of our clients have one major thing in common that make them super successful, I always tell the clients this, and I'm going to show them what that is. That one guaranteed thing at the end of the presentation, follow along. I'm going to show you exactly what it is at the end of the training. Okay? Our company has been featured in a, different, a bunch of different publications. Black Box Social Media has. Now, this is something I want you to write down. This, is a big, this should be a big aha for you. We've been published in all these different news sources because we do press releases. We, uh, we have contacts. I have some great contacts in the press release agency, but you can go to like prweb.com or my favorite is like prreach.com. Just by issuing a press release for as little as like $67, your press release is picked up by other newspapers so you can say, hey, I've been seen in, and you can use some of these same logos. Okay? You sitting down with the client and saying, yeah, I've also been featured in these types of magazines or these types of newspapers, that's a huge deal, and you can do that by just issuing a press release. And I'll do more training on press releases later. Um, but this is huge also for your small business clients. Most people think issuing a press release costs tons of money. Not really. It only costs about 100 bucks, or you can write one, and then you only have to pay like 100 bucks to release them. The really good ones that get you on like CNN and Forbes.com cost 275 bucks. That's gold to a local business for a local business to say that their business has been featured in all these different logos. Now, what a lot of people think we do is super complicated, right? I tell the clients, but the secret is anyone can use the simple systems in their businesses and look like a rock star. And what we're really focused on is making people look like that rock star, meaning not that they have to be big and sexy online, they just have to attract people and, and for people to know that they're there and that they care. So. Our intention by putting the presentation together is to give you or the client some aha moments today. And the strategies you implement today start to attract an endless supply of customers to your business as long as you do it consistently. So here's the good news that I tell everybody, and this works the same thing for yourself. No websites required to start this whole process out, no marketing, no technical knowledge, no social media experience, I mean even from you, right? It literally, starting out, you can be advertising a hot dog trailer and get them on social media and local in really big ways. But I need to explain to you how SEO works for local. So here's what it is. In the beginning, your business or your client's business, right? The, the business actually started out with an idea. Now that idea was, oh my goodness, if I do this, there's going to be tons of people who are going to show up at my business. And typically, the old advertising, you had to yell and scream at people 
at the top of your lungs, and honestly, it doesn't work. It costs a ton of money, and today you need to be where your customers are looking because there's already people right now as I am talking, there's already people, and it's important how you say this to your client, there's already people right now looking for your products and services. You're just not being found, but there's people right now looking for your products and services. It's evident when you pull up just a Google search and see all the results that you get, right? So here's online marketing 101. You got a business, you started out with that idea. From that idea, you're gonna start your business right here. It's in this big ocean that we call the internet, okay? Like if you have a website or you have a business and you're like, hey, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a website up, it used to be you'd get traffic, not anymore. You're literally just a little island out in the middle of the ocean. So what's important to remember is we wanna get you on the map. So you gotta get found on the map, you gotta stake out, stake out your location, this is going to be important. This is going to deal with cell phone or uh, this is going to deal with cell phones, tablets, laptops, GPSs. I'm going to show you how to do all that in just a couple of minutes. So, okay, now, now what? Where is everyone? Meaning, you got this little thing that you set up, this website. You're over here. Maybe your business is a storefront. You're open, but nothing's really happening. So you got to figure out where specifically are your customers looking in what direction. So this is online monetization strategy 101. I explain this to lots of different clients. And I say, look, got your store right here, right? Build it and they will come, but you have to build it. Here's what that looks like. A road, for example, I'm gonna show you how to build a road to your island so people can finally get there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a second road. And then I'm gonna show you how to build bridges where you can literally bring a lot of people over to your island, right? Your place of business. Now what's gonna happen is as we start attracting over traffic, people literally are gonna scan by your site. And we're gonna show you and put you in a way where you'll be able to get scanned by the site. You'll have cruise ships, which you'll find this funny in a couple of minutes. You'll find cruise ships that are coming into your site. And you also even have these sail ships that come in as well. Like you're getting traffic from all different directions. So what's important is you just have to know exactly where your audience is searching at right now. So Here's the monetization online marketing strategy, and this may kind of move a little slow, just the internet connection and everything else. Hey, Kurt. Uh, it may, yes? While you do that, can I just reiterate that this is like a presentation that you guys would take in and do with your clients. So I just want to reiterate that for a second, right? Mm -hmm. This is the kind of thing that you're saying you're sitting across from a local business or a new prospective client, and this is how you'd be presenting. So they're getting to, like, shadow you and watch you as if you're presenting. So, like, for me, for instance, if I had a local coffee shop or a pizzeria or a whatever, bowling alley, whatever, yes? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And, and here's the thing is I am not a high-end graphic artist. People love this like kind of gimmicky, what's a ship, what does that mean? They can relate it to it in, in easy analogies. So what ideally would happen is you would take this presentation and it would be like on a tablet or on your computer and you just go through and tell the story. Like you listen to my story first, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and you go through and just tell a story. People remember stories. Yep, so and you're just doing a big analogy of like, the services and stuff that you'd be providing or, or what, you're actually really just talking about what online marketing is in general with these cruise ships and these airplanes and this yeah, it's island and these everything, right? Yeah, it's basically like, it's it, it, it all it, it basically all comes down to uh, to this, and I'll just show you real quickly. Literally, if they just start a website, like nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so many small businesses okay, are good. like, no, 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 I got this website done by my sister's uncle's cousin's niece, and then they put us on Facebook. And I want, like I make them stare at this image right here. That's all that they have. They don't have anything else. So that's why I want to be able to show them on how to build it all, and what ends up happening is, is when you're showing where people are looking, this is what I say, like Facebook, Facebook's like the party cruise. Like this is going to be fun where you're going to bring over fun traffic, but you can't show up trying to sell your wares on a party cruise like it would never happen. Google is always scanning the skies. Yelp is reviews when people happen on past your business that they'll tell other people. Google Maps is how you get on local search directories, which I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Press releases is like how I showed you to get those logos. Then you have like this big drawbridge right here, that's YouTube. See what happens is, is as you start doing these things consistently, you build a better mousetrap. I mean you build a better business. You know, it's no longer just a hut, like you got a big form of business. Now what happens is, is as you build your business, it's important on what you communicate because, uh, and I'm saying this to my client, like 
you can communicate either with videos. People really want to find out information quickly. You can communicate just, for instance, like with um, blogs, or you can communicate even with um, small, easy sign-up forms or text messaging. There's all different ways to do this, but what happens is, is as you do this consistently, see there's the cheesy little dollar signs I'd like to see coming up, right? As you do this consistently, all this stuff really starts to work. But what's super important, you have to remember, this is what we call reputation management, anybody can build their own island or business, and anybody can say anything, and you don't know if they're the bad guys, you don't know if they're the good guys, or when they start talking, you need to start listening. And you should do that now for your business. Not only are you doing these things, but you're finding out what is your competition saying, and what are other people saying about you and your competition? And this is what I've always said Kate's just brilliant at, is right here. It becomes a two-way conversation, not a one-way. As you're listening and communicating with others, that's really where the money is, is it's really an engagement, but finding out what's going on. But you've got to do these things consistently. And that's the low-hanging fruit, because this is just way too much for a small business. And just picking out one or two things and doing it consistently is huge. So now customers say, so now what? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to build a road, and I'm going to show you the map. So we got to get people to your business, and we got to show them a map, okay? So what I'm going to show with you is a really easy step-by-step -step plan to follow, okay? Now, the first thing is, super easy, is we got to get your business found. So the first thing that we're going to do is your customers are waiting, and what your customers are going to do is they're waiting, and they're going to take a look at a map. They're going to try to find a map. They've got to try to find your business, right? Here's the good news, honestly. The largest map in the world, or the largest online map, I should say, is Google. Almost everybody searches with Google. If they say they search with other search engines, that's great, but just use Google. It's always changing. It's really social media friendly. Just focus on Google. It's what the most, like, every time I give a presentation, very few times do I ever see hands that go up who don't use Google, unless they're like trying to protect themselves from the federal government and do searches that, I, I don't know, just use Google. Um, almost everyone uses it, right? And here's the thing is Google is the biggest and most intelligent search engine in the world, and your clients are already going to know this. Now Google is always uh, know, is, is all-knowing and always learning, and this is where it gets a little creepy. My clients always laugh when I say that. How? Well, the Google algorithm overall. And the algorithm is going to count your votes. You know, it's this huge mathematical equation. They're trying to figure out what is most popular and what are people wanting to see right now. So the more votes means your business gets the best spot on Google's map. So a vote is going to equal a spot on the map. Now, this is really SEO 201. What I just explained to you is votes and the, and the roads going back to your site. Those are backlinks. So we want to get backlinks going back to your site, but we want to make those backlinks relevant. Like when the, when the cruise ship comes over, we want to make sure that those people who are on the cruise ship are relevant and they're all voting or liking your content. So now here's what happens for an example. When I search best cheeseburger, what's going to happen is you're going to see in the yellow box right here, it already starts filling in best cheeseburger in Austin because that's a high probability that other people have searched for that, that that's what I may be looking for. Or it starts going down, best cheeseburger in Austin, best cheeseburger recipe, best cheeseburger soup recipe. See, these suggestions are what other people have typed in and Google saying, hey, I think you may like this. And I'm sure you guys have all seen this. Well, this is actually created by votes because other people have typed in those full sentences. So Google's always watching what are people typing in and what, are they, what, what, what do they have a high probability of clicking on. So this is most popular. Now, if you look, that one of the very first things on Google, first, uh, very first line here on the page, is Austin Culture Map. So this is a local site, okay? Facebook, Facebook, I'm going to talk about Facebook in a minute. Google loves local. They love it. So they find out, okay, well, this is local in Austin. They're talking about burgers, so that's a vote. Here's Yelp. You know, Yelp's a review site that most businesses just aren't even on, and that's a huge vote because lots of other people are on here, like on a social site. So here's what, uh, and then we'll go to Chow Hound. This is something just local as well. I mean, that was back in 2009 that it was posted, but it's still coming up the first page of Google because it's a local site where they're talking about hamburgers. So look at this, Yelp, okay? Votes are counted for how other people vote and engage. So if I go into Yelp and type in best cheeseburger, 
what happens is, is Yelp cultivates all these phone numbers and addresses. So if you're a brand new business and you register certain areas, I don't remember, with certain organizations like Dun & Bradstreet and some of those others, what happens is, is Yelp will actually just import that database directly into their database. So if you look up a pizzeria and you own a pizzeria, you could be listed on Yelp. But here's what happens. You have to claim your listing. Whoops, I went over that too fast. You have to claim your listing. See, a lot of people don't even claim their listing, meaning, oh, you raise your hand to Yelp and say, oh, yeah, that's my address, that's my business. A lot of times they already have yours listed. You raise your hand, you claim the listing, you add pictures, you add photos. Now what happens is you start showing up when people are looking on their iPhones. Yelp always shows up. If you ask Siri, if you ask Siri hey, where's a good place to eat? Yelp's going to show up. So you want to make sure that you're found there. People buy local. So here's the thing, people give ratings and reviews in a local area. So this is a big social vote. So what happens is um, your votes get even counted more if you're getting people to give you ratings and reviews in your local environment. Now, what's super important to understand is like when I go out and speak, I ask everybody at this slide, I go, how many people here use Google or uh, Gmail? Almost 95% plus raise their hand. They, almost everyone uses Gmail and, they, and very few people know this. If you're logged into your personal Gmail, and let's say I'm logged into my personal Gmail, and I go up here and I type in best cheeseburger, look at all these things that show up. It's best cheeseburger in Austin, best recipe, soup recipe in the world, macaroni recipe ever in New York City, pie recipe in Chicago. Why would it say in New York City and Chicago? Well, it's because in my Google, uh, in my Gmail, I was traveling to Chicago, and I was traveling to New York at the time when I did this search. So they knew because of my email address or what I've been talking about in email, what I may be searching for. Well, here's the other thing. Look at this. This is all relevant results that they think is personally that has a high probability that I'm going to click on. So what happens is, is look at this one down over here at the very bottom down here, right here. So this is a friend of mine, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is on Google+, Plus. doesn't even have a website just because she's on Google+. Plus and is in Austin talking about a cheeseburger in Austin, Google's showing me that since I'm logged into my Gmail, since I'm connected with this friend in Gmail, I may find this search relevant. So what I'm showing you on here is you can get on Yelp, which is this best cheeseburger in Austin, which is right, above, right below the first yellow box. That's free to get on there. And then you can also get on just a Google Plus page. That's free to get on the first page. Most people don't even realize this, and just by literally by you going through the training and doing this for them, you can rank them on the first page rather quickly. So again, this is all a vote. Vote for my friends. So here's the way that it basically works. So you have people who share and like the content, right? This is just a news article that I found. So people share on Facebook and tweet it out and share it on Google+. This is all social votes, right? Well, then AOL says, man, that was getting a lot of likes and shares. I'm going to put it on the front page of my website. Oh, my goodness, it's on the front page of AOL. That must mean that's a huge vote from the people, and AOL basically endorses this content. That's a huge vote. And the most important vote is you. So what happens is, is like if you show a small business how to do press releases and you say, look, I can get you news coverage in these different areas, you can put these logos on your brochures to say, as featured in, people love that stuff because it looks like social proof. So most important uh, vote is you, and at the end of the day, Google knows all, and this is where it gets a little creepy, because people type into Google things that they wouldn't ask their significant other, their friends, their parents. So Google knows a lot about all of us, and they look at the overall crowd. Now you got to understand is if you're using like Chrome, like for right now to watch this, or if you're on Google Local, or if you use Gmail, or if you're on YouTube, or if you go to Google+, all these areas, they're all controlled by one entity, by, by the Google entity. And you're not, you're not using separate platforms, you're all using one big platform. And what Google does is they're watching as people are accessing through Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and what happens is people start issuing press releases, and they start writing blogs, and they start having their website, and they start appearing in news releases. People start liking and tweet tweeting and talking about and plus wanting and start showing up on mobile and four stars and uh, GPS and people start asking questions. Well, what happens this entire time is Google's listening to all this chatter that's going on, especially because they can control it right through the entities that you're basically already logged into. 
Now what happens is, is Google is listening for all these votes. What do people like? What's trending? I mean, our trends change on a regular basis, like fashion changes, just people's appetite for information changes. So Google has to be listening, but it's all top secret on how it happens because, see, Google is always learn learning and changing. I mean, they're always changing, just like we are as individuals. We're not the same people we were five years ago, or even you as an individual. So no one outside of Google knows exactly how Google algorithm works. Uh, there's a lot of different theories and opinions. Um, but here at Black Box Social Media, I mean, I spend, we spent a ton of money every year to surround ourselves with industry experts, sought-off professionals. We spend just a ton of money attending conferences, meetings, high-profile mastermind groups to find all this information. Now, this is something that I go through with a client, and I spend a little bit more time on. I want to be sensitive of everybody's time here. But we go through with a client, we basically say, hey, look, we take all of this information when we go out to these masterminds, these events, we test, we monitor and review, we improve, we test, we improve, we quantify the results, we share this res results with others, we test again, and we keep monitoring for changes. When I say we share results with others, because I want to find out what's working for other people and not. Now, if you write this process down right here, literally, or take a screenshot of it, this is the process that you should work with, you should use for all your clients every single month. Because you're going to be able to go back to your clients and say, here's what we tested, here's the results, here's what we found out, here's how we're going to improve. And you share it in networking groups as well. Not with other people who would be competing, but share it in other like online networking groups to get ideas. So this is what I tell clients. Say, hey, look, this is what you're going to have to do for your business. So it really all comes down to you. I'm going to help you draw out a plan here in just a little bit. Um, but it's either going to come down to time or money or it could be pennies. It just kind of all depends on literally what you do and it all depends on what you know. So one of the things I always tell clients is I, as I always bring this up and I say, look, you can do a meetup. Depending on what the client's doing, if you have not ever attended a meetup, you can get all your business that you will ever need or ever want just by attending meetups, shaking hands, and going out and meeting people. If you haven't been to a meetup, go out and do it. You can't just go one time to a meetup. But if you don't know what meetup is, go to meetup.com. If you want to meet up for bowling or dancing, I know someone who got a bunch of business because they set up a jogging group inside Central Park. 20 people showed up. They just went for a jog. And while they're on their jog, someone's like, what do you do for a living? Uh, they, then, then they go into their pitch. So here's the other thing. With meetup, go out, get clients on meetup. That's good for you. For your client, if they do something like health and wellness, if they're a chiropractor, if they teach dance classes, they can teach classes for free. Meetup is where they want people to meet up at, right? So what happens is most people, no one does anything consistently ever. Most people, they'll start a meetup page, and one or two, th a couple of things happen. First, you start up a meetup page. Anyone who's interested in, let's say, I don't know, let's say you want to you want to hold um, a digital marketing. Let's say you want to host uh, internet marketing uh, tips, right? You want to host just a meetup where people get together, eat pizza, drink beer. There are already people who have joined Meetup who says, hey, if there's anything that happens with internet marketing, send me an email. As soon as you start an email, for you or for a client, people are automatically emailed. Automatically that something new is started. Brand new, fresh people. But most people never update their page. It's just ugly. It looks like this. Now, this is a little bit ugly. This is, this is ugly as well. But just because we updated the graphics in some fiber graphics that we used, right, just because we updated the graphics, just because we have events that are scheduled to come out, just because we have a couple of people who reviewed our meetup, I have people out in Denver who have built their local business just by hosting monthly meetups. They give out free information. They don't sell anything. They give free information at the end of the presentation. There's always a time for networking, and a lot of the times during their networking, it comes up, hey, how can we work with one another? So meetup right now, A, gets ranked super fast on Google because they love it, because it's a community environment where there's lots of votes. B, if you schedule one out for your clients, I met someone in San Diego, um, Meetup Mel, made over $100,000 just by setting up meetups for local clients and then doing a meetup a month for them. He scheduled it out. What do you want to do for the year? What are 12 topics you want to discuss? He set up the venue. He filled out this page. It literally took him no more than an hour a month, over $100,000 in a year just by setting up meetups for small businesses, and they rank really fast, okay? The other thing is, is I'm going to show you how you can bypass your competitors on Google super fast, uh, even if you don't have a website. 
You'll learn how to place permanent advertising online. It'll promote your business for as long as the internet exists. And it's free. You just got to do the work. And by the way, most of these business owners, they don't want to do the work. So step one, you must get local. So what happens is, and this is even an old stat, nearly all consumers, 97% right now, use online media when researching products or services in the local area. That could be you're driving and you're looking on your cell phone where there's a place to eat, typing it in your GPS, or sitting at home ready to order a pizza. People are going online versus opening the yellow pages. I mean, people use online searches to find local businesses more than any other traditional methods like uh, printed yellow pages, local newspapers, directory assistance. I mean, people just don't use the yellow pages. I mean, let's be honest. If you call to place a yellow page ad, you still can, but they're going to sell you online SEO services because they're new, because it doesn't work anymore. So uh, placement in online, uh, local online directories is the quickest and easiest way to get your business to appear in the search engines. So what you can basically do is you're, you basically you take your business and you list it inside Google, Google Lo uh, like Yahoo Local, Google Local, Bing. I'm going to give you some examples here in just a little bit. But all you have to do is you just fill this information out. I'm actually going to give you guys the form to use to fill this information out. Um, it's super simple. But most people will never take the time to do this. Literally, maybe it takes 10 minutes per site. And if you do this, they'll rank really fast because Google will rank, um, hey, this must be on, uh, excuse me, hey, this must be on uh, Yahoo Local. Oh, look, it's filled out. Oh, look, there's pictures. Oh, look, there's a description. Oh, look, it links to a website. Oh, look, it was updated recently. All those oh looks, most of your competition would never even fill this stuff out. So all this helps bump you up. So take a look at this. So owner financed homes in Austin. This is all paid ads. This is all paid ads. This right here in the green area, this is free. All this is is they just filled out a Google directory. That's it. So, and this right down here is uh, just one of our sites from one of our uh, my business partner, Nick, when he first ranked his real estate site. But basically what happens is we show this individual right here, fill out your local directory, and fill it out the right way. And here's the right way. So these are paid ads over to the right. All you do is they filled out what categories should she be in, and there's pre-selected categories inside of Google, so you list the categories, you list the hours. The more information you fill out, the more valid that Google looks at this listing. So we filled out what's the business about, we uploaded a video, we uploaded a couple of pictures as well, so now it's an updated video. Google can see, because Google owns Google Places, Google can see that this has recently been updated, that there's newly added pictures, that it's newly filled out, and what ends up happening is it ranks on the very first line of Google right underneath um, the paid ads, absolutely for free, just for setting it up, okay? So list your business today. Uh, I mean, literally, there's hundreds of local search directories. you got to make sure you're on the, uh, on the right one. I always show a testimonial. You can show this one or another one. I mean, this is just a real estate client. Literally, if a real estate person gets one lead that they close, they'll make at least a couple thousand dollars. So if they if, if you charge like five hundred or a thousand dollars to set up local directories, you can easily get your money for that. So here's a local directory case study. I just typed in Hippie Hollow Homes here in Austin, Texas. Um, there's their paid ads at the top. And then look, these are all these different places that their website shows up on absolutely free just because I filled out the form. That's it. Like pretty easy. So when someone comes up and they're looking for your business, you know, people do get bad reviews in their business. Some people are just crazy. But if you start filling out these local directories and you start doing this stuff right, and this is what I tell clients. First of all, you fill these out right, you get all these rankings. Second of all, you're being proactive if someone ever says anything bad about your business. Not saying it'll happen, but if it does, you got a lot of ground already made up versus a lot of ground to cover. So look at this. Local directories getting started now. You'll, uh, you'll learn how to place permanent advertising online that will promote your business for as long as the internet exists. And it's free. It just takes time. So you can take that part out of there. It's free. Now you can go to one of the old sites that I had, which is socialmedia7minutes.com forward slash local. You can download this form. Now here's one of the biggest money tips I'll give you of the night, right? It's just an old site that I had. You can download it, but write that down. This form right here, have your customers fill it out. And then you take this form and you just edit it and fill it out just a little bit, which is, look, it has the full name of the client. It has the customer's address. 
It has a business, the organization. It has a description about the business, right? Write that all up. Then literally, word for word, use this template and, and, and list every single local search directory. And I'm going to give you a list of 50 of them in a minute. But if we list five, if we do five local search directories, we upload photos and or a video if we can and fill out the exact information, five we charge $1,500 for. Most Here's the big other tip, too. I always tell clients, you have to make sure this is filled out properly. Otherwise, it can, be, it can cost you a huge mistake. Here's the inside tip. Do not tell them this. If you fill out this form word for word on all the other social media or all the other directory sites and social media sites, Google is going to say this information is congruent and it matches, so thus it must be from the same person, and you'll get ranked quicker. If a client goes to fill all this information on themselves and they do, you know, they do one one day and then three days later they do it another and then four days later they do it another, uh, and they and they fill it out a different way, Google is going to think they're filled out from different people about different businesses, even though the business name and the address is the same. So you tell people it's super critical I do this for you and it's done in the right amount of time, and you do like one site like every three or four days. You don't do them all at once. Okay. Here's the other thing. You can go to socialmedia7minutes.com forward slash 50 dash local dash directories. That download right there um, uh, will show you the top 50 local search directories. Okay? So literally, if you fill out 10 for a small business, they're light years ahead of the game. Even filling out 10 for a small business, you can easily charge, even if it's your very first client, 500 bucks. It's definitely worth it. They'll show up on cell phones. They'll show up on GPSs. Super, super, super important. All right, I'm going to talk about Facebook. I tell all clients this, look, there's over a billion people on Facebook. There's tons of mobile traffic on Facebook, and the biggest one down at the bottom is women 55 plus. That is the fastest growing demographic on Facebook. Facebook, we can target almost anybody, okay? Now, usually what I do is I go through with the client, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this right here, but we go through and we explain what Facebook is. We explain uh, edge rank, what the algorithm is, you know, how people see the overall content. We explain affinity and weight and time and how edge rank overall, and this is really just a lot of keywords that they got to be posting on the right time to have it picked up by the right people. Um, you know, they need to have a reach where their message gets out. They got to have engaged users. They got to have talking about us. Um, there's a viral percentage. And I, and I just kind of read through it and I'm like, look, there's a lot of stuff to understand here. There's just a method to the madness. Here's the biggest thing that I can show you is according to Mashable, only 16% of the people of your fans are actually going to see any of your posts. So if you're going to do anything on social media, it really needs to be worthwhile, and uh, you need to do it right. So I tell people, what's some of the reasons that you don't get your posts seen? Shameless self-promotion. Most businesses don't know how to communicate properly. That's why I'm here. And 52% of consumers say they stop following a brand on Facebook because the information is just too repetitive, just too boring. So what we do is I give them just a couple of tips. Hey, you know, here, here's a couple of ways. Make a self prom uh, don't do uh, self promotion makes people ignore your fans or ignore your post. Less people who interact with you means less people are going to see your stuff, and your posts don't stay up very long, which decreases your time score. Okay, I'm now informing the client where they're like, okay, this is this is making sense. And then I say, what does this all mean? Simply put, if you don't engage, and that's what Kate's great at. If you don't engage in your posts like you're just never going to be seen. So the more people see and engage, the bigger your audience gets. And then how do you up your edge rank? Well, I give them a couple of ideas. Now what the client's thinking in their mind is, okay, this is going to take a little bit of work, but I understand not much work, right? And this is what you're kind of putting on your tally sheet that you could do for them. So we're basically saying, hey, look, guy, here's all of your options. And then they're going to say, well, that's a lot of stuff to do, and this is where you're going to offer the three options. Like, hey, look, you can do it 100% yourself, or I can train you how to do it, or I'll do everything for you. Okay? So I show them how to up their edge rank. I give them an example. This is a page of, and I'll fly through this really quick. This is a page on AOL, huge site. They don't run their page very well. And I say, look, if you got to know the right way to do post, because if you don't know the right way to do post, like AOL did it wrong right here. They didn't write a very good description. They used this gray box of death when they put this link description in. And basically what happens is, is we just took that same picture on one of our client site that's much smaller than AOL's, and we basically put up the picture, and we also put click like if you put a hot tub in your living room. Something fun and exciting, okay? 
So what were the results? AOL, um, us, uh, we got 36 likes, AOL got 4 likes. Comments, we got 10 likes, AOL got 0 likes. And all I basically do to explain to the client is, look, there's a method behind the madness of posting, and what's really important is even large companies like AOL can screw it up. This is why I'm confident that I can do something for your small business to really make a big difference in your, uh, really make a big impact in your business. This is a good example of a credit union hadn't had any action in two months, two months because all they were doing is self-promoting. So we showed them how to do a caption, we showed them how to do some easy, fun pictures. I mean, Kate's amazing at her content and that's what a lot of the training's about as well too. So. Reasons to be active on Facebook, improve communication, uh, promotion of brand, promotion of product and service, customer service, lead generation. By the way, for you, uh, for you guys, just for filling out all the information on a fan page, for example, um, that actually helps the STO ranking. People start fan pages and actually don't go to the company profile and fill out all that information. Fill out all that information. It'll help the Facebook page get ranked in Google. Because remember, Google can't see the posts what's being made on a fan page because a fan page is behind a secure membership area but if you fill out the, all the information on your face about your Facebook page that page will rank higher up in Google uh, reasons to be active you can generate leads brand awareness driving traffic I mean there's, there's lots of different reasons let's talk about Twitter real quick Twitter I basically tell people hey look there's a ton of mobile users here lots of people use Twitter and the big thing is, is Twitter and mobile also go hand in hand. 95% of people on, of Twitter users own a mobile phone. And I like to say that baby right there is the remote control of your life. And then I show customers this one thing and they're blown away by it. Hey, we can even target customers for you. I can do this. Or you can do it. You target conversations in real time. Target conversations where you want to do business. So, for example, there's a site and you can take out that link or you guys can use it, twitter.com forward slash search. And I say, hey, look, I want to look for people who are talking about pizza in Austin, Texas, in English. Search. Oh, wow, look, I love food that never expires, like leftover pizza. Thanks, Rob. How about this person? I like pizza. I like pizza. I like pops. I like this. Or I like plaid. I like pizza. I like pops. That's what it says, right? So if you own a local pizza joint, this is someone that you could tweet right now and say, hey, we have a special on pizza, or hey, come in for a free pizza, or hey, come in for a free free drink if you, if you like pizza. You can engage with people as they're talking right now. This just takes someone sitting in a computer and just running these searches and literally just typing a response. Here's the other thing. Let's talk about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, I always tell people the average, the third one down, the average U.S. income of a LinkedIn member is $86,000. And honestly, the conversion is three times higher than that of Facebook and Twitter of people finding a business on LinkedIn because on LinkedIn, it's more of an affluent membership. We like to say that LinkedIn is kind of like hanging out at the country club, and it represents a valuable demographic for marketers with an affluent and influential membership. And what can happen is, is for you to advertise for businesses, business to business, LinkedIn is great for advertising. That's another uh, conversation. But literally just you personally filling out your professional profile, make sure it's full, up to date. I ask other people for recommendations. Here's one of the guys I work with, uh, Tom. And basically what you do is you ask other people for, write other people recommendations and then they'll write recommendations for you as well. But when people look you up in LinkedIn, you want to have a good profile. Now if you take a look at, for instance, the, other, uh, the next one, just by filling out company profiles, I mean, literally, you get a nice-looking page. You can do that. You can go to Fiverr and get the graphics set up. But now there's SEO benefits if you have the LinkedIn page fully filled out, uh, filled out for a company page. So I've already said local search directories fill that whole thing out. Facebook, you can design a Facebook page by going onto Fiverr, showing them a posting strategy, filling out all their information. Now this is what we're charging $1,500 for a basic setup for local businesses, just filling it out and setting it up. Okay company benefits and services you can now add videos in here so it allows you to promote your services for your companies inside of the company uh, the company page on LinkedIn detailed summary upload video commercial you have your contact information I mean just list it again that's gonna help it show it up in Google let's talk real quick about videos since Google owns YouTube uh, over a billion unique users each month um, here's the big one is the second one from the bottom Number of videos each month by the average U.S. visitor to Google. 
they watch 20 videos. It's a microwave mentality. They want to fix that want right away. So I tell clients and I go, look, 33% of the top average performing campaigns in YouTube are under 30 seconds. So 30 seconds videos. I want you to keep that in mind. But where a lot of money is getting spent and where they're seeing a return is 30 seconds, under 30 seconds. 28% of the top performing ad campaigns in YouTube are between 60 and 90 seconds, just 60 and 90 seconds. 11% of the top performing ad campaigns in YouTube are longer than 180 seconds, okay? So at the end of the day, it's all about timing, and here's why. 22% of U.S. businesses plan to post a video, one, to YouTube in the next 12 months. One. Most people want to repost one because they got these issues like, I don't know if I look good. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do that. People just want answers to their questions. That's it. They just want answers to their questions. So if you can make some really short and easy videos that answer a question, right? I mean, super, super, super simple. That, for instance, like maybe you have a roofing business and you give a tip on how to fix a roof, like a patch in the roof, because you don't make a whole lot of money at it. Uh, you don't make a whole lot of money at it. However, um, let's just say, for example, that you can start showing tips on how to fix a roof or how to fix small things on your roof so people start to get to know your brand by answering questions. Assist in solving a problem. Provide advice or a review. Showcase you and your business, but showcase less about you and your business and provide insight. So, for instance, we do frequently asked questions. What are the top ten most frequently asked questions about your business? The next ten are should ask. What are the top 10 questions people should be asking if they're going to do business with you, like for a roofer, if they're going to hire a roofer? And then we have a couple of videos that just kind of showcase us and our business so people can see us. But when people are asking questions, how do I fix a leaky roof, you want your videos to come to the top. But here's the whole thing, is you don't need high-end equipment, you don't need high-end lights, you don't need a director, you don't need any of that stuff. You can literally use just like an iPhone. iPhone works great. We do that for lots of clients. An iPad. Um, or clients can use their own computers. But if you get clients to record a couple of videos, I mean, that's huge. No one ever does anything consistently ever. If someone gets a video done, they do one or two and they pay four or five or six thousand dollars for it. Very few people do four videos a month, like off their iPhone. If your clients did four videos a month, just four, and then you had it edited like off Odesk or you went to like videohive.net and got a template that could be edited by someone on Odesk. If you did four videos a month for a client, three or four months later, they're going to outrank all their competition, right? You just got to make sure the SEO is right on the videos and show you how to tag up YouTube videos. But literally, just create simple videos. <clears throat> I mean, you will leverage YouTube to rank your content in lightning speed. Here's a great example. Sell my house fast in Austin, Texas. I took that screenshot. That thing's been up there since August 30th, 2011. That's just one video. So last thing we're going to talk about when we wrap this thing up, talk about Google Plus because they're owned obviously by Google. Um, the big thing here is there's lots of brands here. There's lots of users. You know they have over 550 or like 600 million users. Uh, there's the, uh, active. I think there's like 300,000. But here's the most important thing to remember: unlike other conventional social networks, which are generally accessed through a single website, Google's described Google Plus as a single layer, consisting not only of a single site but rather uh, an overarching layer which covers many of its online properties. So, whoops, hit the wrong arrow. So when you use, when people say, when I ask people to use Gmail, yeah, use Google Plus, nah, not at all, I don't use it at all. No, you, no, you actually do. You're actually linked in together. You actually have a profile. You just haven't fully set it up yet, but it's all linked together. So you really need to get people set up on local search directories. You really need to get people, if they have a Gmail address, most of their clients sort of do, you got to get them set up on Google Plus and in YouTube. See, here's what happens. Considering Google, here's just a couple of hand reasons why, or a handful of reasons why, because Google owns a lot of properties now, a lot of properties. And with that being said, if you if anybody accesses through any of these properties, Google's already tracking and seeing what they're doing. So, given that Google is the king of online search, creating a company page for your business on Google Plus can help that visibility in the ranking. So, higher targeted, more effective pay-per-click too. You can run some amazing pay-per-click strategies. Very simple, a couple clicks of a button. But if you're hooked up to Google Plus, so much easier to run, and um, they give you a cost, uh, they give you a big cost savings as well. Here's the other thing. I looked up Google Plus facts. I come up with this picture. 
So Google's getting a lot better about showing pictures of people who have written content in typically in Google Plus. Okay. What happens is if you can get your image or your client's image to show up here, I know for some of my people who resell social media or who sell social media manager services, um, they do really well with this. And here's the reason why is because people can like, for instance, click on this guy's name, Luke, and you see everything that Luke's written about. So there you go. I'm just big old piles of money, so I tell people. This right here is called Google Authorship. So by literally just placing a little code on your client's site, and you can look up Google Authorship. It's literally like three steps, super simple, super easy. Um, uh, but uh, Just look it up, but that's how you get your face. Literally just by writing some Google um, uh, writing some Google post, you can start getting your post ranked on the first page of Google as well. Google Hangouts, that's where we're on right now, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I do tell clients, hey, look, here's a way where you can record interviews with other people or you can record tips and conversations. I have a lot of clients in the health and wellness space. This is where they can coach their clients at directly. It's absolutely free. Simple engaging Google Plus and producing content will get them ranked quickly on the search engine. And by the way, I always ask, do you use Gmail? Yeah, most people do. So you should know about Priority Inbox, where Google basically helps eliminate tons of spam, because Google knows that people get a lot of spam. Remember, Google's looking at spam for A, not only for Gmail, but also how that matches up on Google's search algorithm as well. So they always want to make sure that you're getting perfect results. If you don't get perfect results, you're not going to be using Google. So they always want to make sure it's perfect results. So Google steps in and they says they're going to assist. Google learns from what is important or what is not, and Google will crowdsource what's relevant. So what they're going to do is they're going to basically take a look of other people that are getting sent this same email, and they're going to find out who's opening it and who's not. And they're going to start sorting everything and creating the perfect inbox. So everything else that looks like spam that other people haven't opened, that other people have said is spam, that goes into an everything else folder, then you have your important folder. So Google is always learning what you're reading, what you are ignoring, what you are engaged with online, and what does your personal crowd do. So this means your customers to my client. So I need to be active on Google Plus and uh, some of these other sites. And I'm telling my client, hey, at this point, if people aren't watching your YouTube videos, because most of them get stuff through their Gmail, if they're ignoring their emails that they're getting, if they're not being engaged with online, literally Google Plus can make it where they don't read emails from you in Gmail, and they don't see the search results from you either. So it's pretty, it's super important to be engaged. If your emails are not getting read, if people are not engaging with you online, if the crowd behaves the same way, your customers stop seeing your emails and messages from you. So just email marketing doesn't work as well. So you see why it's critical. This last point, uh, this last fact will change everything. Ready? Super important. I tell all businesses this. This is my competitive advantage. Listen, only half, uh, not even a quarter of the small businesses out there have a social media strategy. And Mr. Client, what I know is no one will ever do anything consistently ever, ever. So that's my advantage. Now, I already have all these different strategies to go with, and I'm sure you understand how big this opportunity is overall. So let me show you this kind of members-only access, right? This is only for the social media manager pros. Remember that one thing that I said would guarantee a surefire way for your business to grow and prosper online? It's everything we've taught you already. All you have to do is just one simple thing. So get ready and write it down and do it. So as you post, analyze, uh, engage, monitor, and analyze, this seriously, like this next, these next two words will make you more money than anything else for your clients because no one ever does it. Period. And people pay me, and I'll say this: if you get good at it, like I got, I like to say celebrity clients, some pretty well-known people, they pay me a lot of money to do this next point right here, just because they trust me. Not because I have more knowledge than them, but just because they trust me that I'll be consistent. That's it. So by filling out local search directories, I've already given you a list of 50. Most people never fill them out. Now you can, and that's how you get people to show up on you know, cell phones and tablets and computers. Now just by setting up a Facebook page. I mean, I know people who charge $500 just to get a graphic off Fiverr and then just to fill in all the information that's the exact same that you filled in the local search directories. From there, you can look up press releases. You, know, you can go to PR Web or, as I mentioned, PRReach.com. Um, you can issue those press releases and get people logos. I mean, these are all simple ideas where literally I show people with this presentation, hey, look, if you're consistent overall, what's going to happen is it's going to lead to this pile of money. 
but and then I'd have my company name here, your company name. Um, basically, what happens is, look, you know you have to be doing all these things. You know that your competition isn't doing these things right now. So let's talk about getting started. So I don't need to do a Facebook page for you first. Let's talk about these local search directories because once I fill them out, they're going to be permanently online. And I have an exact way to get you started, that's our form, on 50 of the top of the local sites. Let's at least start you with the first 10. 10 sites, 500 bucks, it's only going to take you 10 minutes, but you know, uh, 10 minutes for each site, but you know exactly how it is. Uh, so 500 bucks for 10 sites, and it takes you an hour to do it. Your, your rate's close to 500 bucks an hour. I bet you can get it done in two hours. But... Okay, that's a presentation. We went over a lot of information in 55 minutes and 36 seconds. Are you still there? Did your internet connection fall off? Did I just talk to myself? Okay. Did I lose somebody? I'm here. I, I, I'm here. I'm sorry. Not a problem. That's good because I was just looking at my Skype. I'm like, uh-oh, I think I lost her completely. You, you didn't lose me completely. I'm sorry. Uh, Jesse had walked in and was asking me a couple of questions. So it's okay. He's an important individual. He's an he is an important individual. Um, all right, good. So are they going to get access to this presentation again? Did you mention that? Yes. Can you give them a copy of it that they can. Absolutely. Yep. Use? I will send you a link on that. Yep. Awesome. And then you guys got the link where you can grab the directories for the 50 handouts. So any. Um, Wednesday, um, do we have any questions from anybody in the Facebook group um, or on the YouTube page? Let me go, let me check that out. Do you have any final thoughts while I'm looking to see if we have any questions from our, from our social media managers on the call? No, that's a no. No? It's a lot of information all at once. I mean, basically, it's I just kind of showed it's low hanging fruit. But it's good. You guys can go back and watch the video. And you're right, it's low hanging fruit. Will you say a little bit more about that? About how do you choose the businesses that you're going to go give this presentation to? Um, okay, so here's, here's the exact way that I do the. Uh, that's funny. I'm mean, itching my ear and I'm looking. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm on the video thing right there, right? You um, are on the video thingy. That video thing on the interwebs. I mean, here's the thing is, I only work with people that I really like. Like, there's some people that I just don't want to work with. Um, here's what I do is, I just kind of go throughout life um, uh, enjoying the things that I do. So, for instance, I just went to a big conference. And, okay, you were there as well at a big digital conference. And I just start asking people what they do. And depending on what their business is, then it depends on how I structure my conversation. But that's how I network for businesses now. When I was first starting out, Literally, like, I would go to the same gym I would every single day, so I'd just start talking to the manager, like, oh, man, who runs this place? It's really interesting. Why did you decide to be a manager here? And i just start asking them questions about their business, and entrepreneurs love telling you about their business. So what I do is I just start listening to them and their passion. Now, I'm all about language, and if someone comes up to me and they're like, oh, son of a bitch, like, I just, this gym is just costing me so much money, and I just hate this place, and I just... I'd sell it if I could, because I'm tired of working seven days a week, you know, 80 hours a week. I'm just tired of it. That's someone I wouldn't even talk about the business to, like not okay. at all. Just not just because their language just shows that they're already grumpy, like not at all. I go to this. There's this ice cream shop down over by my house called Lick. It's so awesome. They have like goat cheese, thyme, and lemon uh, uh, ice cream. It's amazing. But basically, I go inside there, and I start talking to the guys who own the place, and they're like, oh, my goodness, we've always wanted to own an ice cream shop. We just love this. And I'm like, dude, I love it. Like, down in South Austin, like, you're in a cool spot. Like, I love this place. And I look at my phone, and, I, you know, I type, I type in Lick Ice Cream, and nothing pulls up. No Yelp directories. And I can see this on my iPhone, like, in 30 seconds, right? And then I'm looking, they don't have any reviews, and I'm like, do you guys, are you guys even set up on like Google Plus or Yelp to get, even get reviews? Like, you guys have amazing ice cream. They're like, oh, our customers love it. Do you, I'm just really curious, like, do you have a place where they can do that? Um, most of them have no idea what I'm talking about, right? And then I start saying Yelp reviews, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So I engage in a conversation. The worst thing that you can do is throw up on somebody is walk up to somebody and say, oh, you got a nice ice cream shop. Hey, have you ever thought about being online with Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter? Hey, did you know you could? Nobody cares about what you know. They care that you're listening to their story. 
and saying, oh, I could help with that. Oh, that's really interesting. Now, most of the times what I'll do is I'll visit an establishment. I don't make my pitch the very first time. I'll build a relationship, and I may ask some seeding questions, which are basically like if I'm at that ice cream shop lick, hey, you know what? You, I mean, you guys got an amazing business. I don't see that you're here on Yelp or Google. Like, people can rank your business, and you can get found up on an iPhone a lot better. They're like, really? They go, yeah, 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 I help small businesses with that stuff all the time. Hey, I tell you what, I'll come in and buy an, I'll come in and buy another quart of ice cream next week if you sit down and talk to me for ten minutes. And I'm always That's happy to bad. do. And I'm always happy to buy, to buy. Uh, just I, I think money's reciprocal, and I believe money's like energy. So you have to spend it to receive it. And I'm not saying you go to every client and buy everything that they have, but I definitely believe in sitting down with the restaurant, you know, having eating some food, and then getting my chance to, uh, to talk to the manager for five or ten minutes. And that's how I pre-qualify my businesses. So I've kind of heard you mention restaurants a little bit. You know, you just talked about the ice cream shop. Um, are there other types of what would be considered local businesses or that you that you really like or that are easy sells or are there ones that are harder? Uh, you know, I mean, I, again, I don't know anything about this. So help The me easy out. sales are the stuff that you love the most. So, for instance, like, Kate, if you were starting a new local business, you're like, hey, who should I go target? And I'm like, you love dance. You haven't done that in years. And I know you've been taking a couple of dance lessons. Like, Go hang out at some dance studios. You'd be like, oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, and then just kind of ask them about their business. But you get to go out there and kind of explore or, you know, shopping for certain things. Like you like to go to certain stores. Like you go to those certain stores and just start kind of looking around. And, you know, some people, like, they've played pool all their life. And they're like, man, I just want to go talk to pool halls and people who sell pool tables. Like there's so much – if you just – I tell people most of the time, look, if you had off three days from work, what would you go do? You can go do anything. If they say they walk in the wilderness for three days, like, that's not something I'm looking for, right? Hey, I'd go to the gym. I'd go to the mall. Now, I'd go to my favorite little cookie place over here. Then I'd go over here. Those are all people that you can talk to right now. Yeah. I have a question, and this is a good one. Um, Dawn is asking this, and I've heard this question a lot. Um, and part, truthfully, this is one of the reasons why I have stayed away from local businesses because I hear that they're cheap. So Dawn asks, how do you overcome a small business that's cheap? She says um, uh, that the, the clients she's working with uh, seem to be people who seem to spend lots of money in cost groups. I don't even know what that is. Is that horrible? But they have no money for social media or online marketing. It seems that they just want to nickel and dime everything. Uh, they've brought in uh, the head of Yelp small business sent from New York, and these businesses don't seem to see the value until they get a bad review, which kind of makes sense, right? Like there's nothing wrong, so there's nothing to fix until they get a bad review. I don't know if that's just part of the ecosystem, but... So maybe that's kind of a two-part question, but I've heard that going out and getting like a sandwich shop or your hot dog store, your dry cleaner, your chiropractor, that you know they don't they they're not really willing to spend a lot of money. So if you could could you address that, and then also the whole thing about when when someone thinks that they're okay and they don't need any kind of online marketing, reputation management assistance until something bad happens, how do you kind of set them up for? Um, success ahead of time or how do you let them know that the time to act is before management. right reputation management is before you get a bad review it's actually called crisis management after you get a bad review so yeah. I, have a, I, have a, I have a client who's done over 10 million in the last two years and we had a huge aha about that that I'll show you that story with you um, but let's uh, okay. let's uh, excuse me let's first go over pricing so people hate when I say this but it's absolutely true for the pricing it usually I didn't get a beer. All I got was just water. That's a good idea. Um, so when it comes down to pricing, honestly, and people don't like when I say this, but a lot of times it comes down to your language. It comes down literally to what you're saying and how you're saying it. So here's the deal. If I go up to somebody and, and um, let's just say any business, a dry cleaner, right? I like the dry cleaner. I like the shop owner. We build a good rapport. And I say, listen, hey, would you be interested? I have an idea. I can set you up on these local search directories. I can help you get set up on social media. You can tweet out specials. Like, I can get this whole thing set up for you. And if they go, you know, how much is it going to cost? Well, we, first of all, we always talk about the benefits, right? How much is it going to cost? If their first question is, is how much it's going to cost versus some of our processes, I know they're going straight for the lowest cost, uh, cost option. 
What I do that you'll find out in one of the early modules that Kate and I did, you're going to find that when I do this whole when I do this whole IBR thing, intention, behavior, result, right? When I talk to the client, I say, "Look, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions so I can understand your true intention." Now, I will manage the behavior to make the results happen for the results that you want. So you just tell me what you want and I'll worry about how it gets done and you're going to judge me on overall results. Okay? Well, what happens is, is when a client sits down and they say, well, how much is this going to cost? I say, look, I'm going to give you three options. Option one, you're going to do it 100% yourself. Like I'll record a couple of videos for you. I can do some Jing videos or record a couple of videos, show you how to do it. You can do it all on your own. It's the easiest option. Because if you record videos and show one person how to do it, that means you can resell those videos to someone else too, right? Option two, I will consult with you or I'll train you one-on-one -on -one in exactly how to do it or I'll train your staff, which is a little bit less, uh, a little bit less, or I'll do everything for you. Here's exactly the way I say it. Okay, I'm going to give you three options. Number one is you can do it yourself. You want to do everything yourself. Number two is I'm going to coach you or your team directly. Number three. I'm going to do everything for you. Now, please keep in mind, the more that I do for you is the more expensive that price is going to be. Does that make sense? Clients are always, they start shaking their head. They go, yep, uh-huh, that makes sense. So they already know if I do everything, it's going to be more expensive. So then more people want to hire you for the coaching, right? Which you actually end up doing less work on, which is great, right? Um, so what ends up happening then is when they go, okay, well, what's the price going to be? Well, let's, let's take a look at this. I go, I'm going to do uh, five local search directories. So I'm going to do five local search directories. I'm going to set you up on Facebook. I'm going to set you up on YouTube. I'm going to set you up on Twitter. I'm going to set you up on LinkedIn. Now, I'm going to have to get a graphic designer to design each one of these. So there's five local search directories, and then there's five websites over there. So there's 10 right there. So even at $500, that's 50 bucks a site, right? Super easy. So what I'm going to tell the client is, hey, look, what I'm going to about ready to do for you, you have permanent online marketing. So, for example, what I'm just kind of curious, let's say, Kate, you own a dry cleaners. I do. Hey, how much, how much is an average customer to you? This customer walks in the door, how much is that worth to you? $12. By the way, most clients will look just like that. They don't know. So I'm, I'm guessing $3 an item. Many, most people have between 3 and maybe 10 items, so I went with 4 or 5, and we'll go with 12 or $15. Okay, so each person's worth fifteen dollars. Are they a repeat customer a couple of times during the month, or are these people who come in uh, once? Uh, yeah, maybe they come in once a month. Maybe they come in once a month. Mm -hmm. So fifteen dollars. So I literally, and I always do this. I pull out my little trusty calculator. What is five? Let's just say a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars divided by fifteen. So I basically say, hey, look, I need to get 66 clients in here for this to, for this to pay for. That's what you're telling me. If it's $1,000, 66 clients. Now, whether those 66 clients come in next month or two years from now because you're set up on all these pages, 60, it's 66 clients total that pays for everything. Right? So I always start to lay it out to them. And then if people really start to get cheap on me, I say, hey, you know what? You can absolutely do it yourself. But keep, in, but keep this in mind. If you don't start your competition will. And you cannot, in a social media environment, you cannot catch up. It's not like SEO where you could build a nice fancy website where you could buy these link builders or whatever to be on the first page of, of Google. If you're not engaged in social and your competitor is, like it's done, like it's over. Like there's not, there's not really an opportunity to catch up. So you either do it now or you don't. And honestly, if people are really cheap on it, I just say, hey, look, here you can do it yourself or I'm happy to coach you. Other than that, I don't negotiate on any of my other prices. And I just leave it because there's so much business out there. If I get, for example, a $1,500 setup, that's everything, the five local search directories and the five sites that I just told you, and we use Fiverr to help set that whole thing up. Um, and then we do one press release valued at, uh, I think we spend like 250 bucks on it, but we charge 1500 just that stuff right there at fifteen hundred bucks. So take away my press release, twelve hundred. I mean, what do you need? Two clients to replace. What is what is two clients? Two clients pays you three thousand. What's three thousand times twelve? Thirty six thousand dollars a year. Did I do my math right on that? I don't know. Three thousand. What? Three thousand times I was trying, twelve. I was trying to look for questions, so I was hoping right. you could do. Math. 
So if I do two setups like that a month, that's thirty-six thousand dollars a year. You don't have to. You know, if someone's if someone's worried about the price, you just move to the next one. And by the way, my favorite line. Oh, by the way, my production schedule is getting rather full. If you decide to do this by the end of the month, I can still squeeze you in. I always say my production schedule is full. So it goes for the other people, the $10 million lesson. If you don't put anything online right now, like all the local search directories, that means that basically you have this wide open sandbox. I had a client who basically had this wide open sandbox with their name and their company name. And what ended up happening was is we had all these websites set up and it's like we build all these sandcastles in the sandbox. And then what ended up happening was is they wanted to take down all the sites just because they said, hey, I don't think we need all these other sites. We just want this one main site. And we basically knocked down all those sandboxes. So then one person came and said something bad about their business. It ranked on the first page of Google right away. So what happens is, is you have to get these local search directories set up. You have to get people giving positive reviews because I find this all the time with small businesses when I look them up. Someone will fill out a nasty Yelp review. It's like writing spray paint on the front of your business and not doing anything about it. Because people will look up your business and you cannot delete a Yelp or a Google review. You just, you can't. So you have to be proactive. If people see 55 stars, people love your business, it doesn't matter when you get one or two bad comments. But if you only have three or four bad comments and then you decide to get online and fight about it, then like it's over. Like it's, I mean, what 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 happened many many times before, is especially like in the restaurant, you just have one bad meal. You could go there for five years. You find a rat turd in one of your plates. You tell two of your friends. Your friends are gonna remember the rat turd every time they drive past the place. Not the great late nights that you had eating food there. You know that's, that's true. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. All right, you guys, I don't see any more questions coming in. I did see a comment from Elizabeth Todd that said she learned a lot. And also, Kurt, we're going to be doing some follow-up videos. They probably won't be on a hangout like this, but you'll just do them, and we'll put them in the training on how to do some of these things that you talked about tonight, like yep. you mentioned press releases and claiming your spot on Google and Yelp, which I hate to sound so um, – I'll switch for just a second. I hate to sound so – uh, ignorant or whatever when I say it, but honestly, I don't do that stuff. So I, I use, I'm a user of Yelp and I'm a user of Google Plus, so I know about putting positive and negative reviews. But claiming and all that stuff is totally out of my league. So uh, there will be some follow-up videos um, that you guys can check out on how to actually do this stuff, and maybe a little bit more on pricing and and all that. Is there anything else you can think of that they can look forward from you in the future around this topic that you want to share? Um, no, I mean I'll just expand out some more of those trainings. I mean they're cha they're changing all the time, but getting people set up on local search directories is the lowest hanging fruit. It gets them found right away on GPSs, and most people don't even realize that it's there. And then setting up like ratings and reviews, just helping people to get additional um, comments and reviews on their local listings. Those two things are are basically free that you can help a client set up and run. So yeah, I'll do some more of those trainings and some um, some other small SEO trainings, and I'll give you some good referrals of some great people that I work with, some great systems as well too. Perfect. And um, the one last thing I want to say before we hang up is. Um, um, first of all, don't forget about the contest because I want to hear your Facebook contest ideas and I want someone to win the $50 Amazon gift card. You only have till Thursday or Friday, I can't remember which one it is, um, but please, please do that. So besides that, there was one other thing. Oh yeah, next hangout, you know, every two weeks, so not next week, but the week after we are having Thomas uh, from Splash Post and a couple webinars ago, Jesse was on sharing about his Facebook ad strategy, and one of them used um, a tool called Splash Post. Uh, Kurt, I think you are familiar with Splash Post. You use it, yes? Mm -hmm. All right, good deal. And we actually have Thomas, the creator of Splash Post, on doing a training for us talking about that tool and a couple of other tools that he has developed that are really getting amazing results for his clients in terms of um, edge rank, getting into the news feed, and then once you're getting into the news feed, converting those views into um, email addresses or site visits, right? Whatever you're trying to get people out of Facebook to go do. Um, he's brilliant in that regard, and I'm really excited to have him on 
Uh, we've been in, back and forth in communication. He's actually in Singapore, so having him on, um, it'll be early. It works out perfect. It's early in the morning for him. It's late at night for us, and I'm excited to have Thomas uh, there. So check your email inbox for a link to register or to be on for that training. Um, be sure to enter the Facebook contest in the Connect group, and then you guys can get the replay of this video and all the handouts inside Social Media Manager Connect Wednesday. We'll be uh, posting those tomorrow, and then you can look for um, more training from Kurt on social media for local businesses forthcoming as we have time to record and uh, upload more videos for you. So, um, Kurt, I really, really appreciate you being here this evening. I appreciate your time. Uh, just so you know, Kurt, Kurt is super busy. He has been on back to back to back to back to back to back coaching calls all day today. No and voice. he is super in high demand, not only from these local businesses that he's talking to you guys about, but actually from a lot of the gurus in the industry, which he didn't go on and on and on about. but. All the gurus in the internet marketing industry <coughs> use Kurt, look to Kurt for uh, social media advice, and um, so I'm really happy that you're here as a co-instructor. And thank you for your for your time tonight. And I look forward to learning more about this whole local business thing <laughs> <laughs> from you because I hear it's kind of a big deal. It's the bee's knees. It's the bee's knees. All right, next time bring a beer since I had a glass of wine. I'm always having a glass of wine on these hangouts because that wine time starts at nine or starts at eight, and that's when these hangouts start. So, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you have questions, feel free to post them in the group. We might be able to pull Kurt back for an impromptu Q and A, or I can make sure that he gets your questions and answers them for us. And in the meantime, I will see you guys in the Connect group. And that's it. Have a good night. Thanks so see much. Everybody. Have a good one.